The Dune of Drumsna. The word Dune is derived from the Irish word Dune, meaning fortress or large earthworks. Drumsna, Dumarsnav, meaning hill or ridge over the swimming place. The Dune of Drumsna is situated inside the stretch of land in the loop of the River Shannon, bordering counties Leitrim and Roscommon and south of Drumsna and Jamestown. The River Shannon in this loop, which surrounds the old Charlestown estate, the river is shallow and in places one could wade across it. It is not navigable other than by a rowboat, hence the need for the construction of the rampart to defend Connacht. The Dune of Drumsna was reported on by Sean McConnell of the Irish Times on the front page on Monday the 13th of November 1989 and as the Berlin Wall, Checkpoint Charlie, also known as the Iron Curtain came down between East and West Germany in that year, the titled it with Maeve's Checkpoint Cahill found in, in Roscommon. Two archaeologists, Victor M. Buckley and Tom Condit, working in County Roscommon, have discovered an Irish iron curtain, but it dates to 100 years before Christ. LIDAR images are available on the website Black Pig's Dyke, under County Roscommon. In 1989, a geographical survey was carried out by expert Mr Dermot McGarry by means of resistivity directing electrical pulses into the earthworks as shown in the LIDAR image on the Black Pig's Dyke website. The archaeologists believed that the structure was built to defend the Kingdom of Connacht and Queen Maeve who was seated in power in Ratcrohan, which is 14 miles to the southwest of the Dune. It is believed that Connacht was the main province in Ireland and required defending from attacks from the north by Ulla, ruler of Armagh, and his army. This is the only place on the Shannon north of Athlone where attacking forces could have crossed, and it is an amazing sight in its scope and execution. The main gate is 26 metres wide, 1.6 kilometres in length, and between four and six kilometers high and required enormous work. The archeologists found a massive rectangular and central pit which could have housed one of the gate posts. This post would have been around two meters wide. The whole defense would have required 50 to 60,000 trees and 150,000 cubic metres of soil and roughly 10,000 people working for a couple of years to erect this rampart. So the Connacht Society at the time, possibly 200,000 people, must have been highly organised. This, I reckon, is why we only have a few inches of soil left in the most of Leitrim. It's all in the dune of Drumsna. The dune has steep slopes facing Leitrim and a gradual one on the Roscommon side, with two passageways through the triple line of defence with staggered openings to slow down the movement of people hoping to gain entrance to Connacht and allow the people guarding the defence to vet the entrance before allowing entrance to Connacht. Cattle were also brought in through these gates These gated areas were strengthened with wooden stakes shod with iron points. Decayed remains of these were found at the dune. The whole ramparts date back to the time of the Thorn and it gives credence to the view that there was considerable trouble between Connacht and Ulster. It also gives credence to the whole idea of the Thorn legends. Many of the Thorn stories refer to battles being fought in the shallows on the rivers, 
and the Drumsna site would fit into these oral pictures. Political refugees from the north were thought to have made up part of Queen Maeve's army. It is in fact not unlike the border crossings of today. A small model of the dune with supporting methods of research as well as photographs of how it looks today is in Drumsna Community Resource Centre on Key Street. The lands are privately owned and farmed by local families. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed hearing about this piece of history as part of National Heritage Week in County Leitrim. <laughs>